The Shigoku, or Warring States period in Japan, was a time of great social upheaval and political intrigue. It was during the Onin War that Iyamo Tessen, the chief retainer of Kotaro Norimoto, Lord of the Magnificent Himeji Castle, plotted intrigue against the lordship. No one would have suspected if Okiku, one of Iyamo's young maids, had not overheard him discussing his plans with his follower, Chunsubo Jinshiro, for Lord Kotaro held him in high esteem, and had even given him a fine mansion within the castle walls and set a price set of priceless porcelain dishes from Hebei province. Oyama was very pleased with his spacious mansion. He was especially impressed with its protective wooden walls, which, like the impenetrable castle, were covered with white plaster for fire protection. He also treasured his new set of dishes, which immediately became a valued family heirloom, and declared so precious that anyone who broke one risked being put to death. Schmitten by the beauty of Okiku, he entrusted the dishes to her safekeeping, which she locked in a silk-lined wooden chest. He hoped that by honouring her with his trust, he would win her affections. There were ten dishes in the set, three cups, three saucers, three plates, and a teapot. They were made of the most delicate, translucent, snow-white porcelain she had ever seen. Okiku was indeed honoured by Oyama's gesture, but she was not sure of her new master's intentions. He was a famous samurai, after all, and above her station, what could he possibly want with her other than a fleeting romance? So, she steadfastly refused his advances. Besides, she was already secretly betrothed to the handsome young samurai, Chinogasa Motonobu. They met every night by the castle's main well where everyone else slept, and it was there that they pledged their love for each other in the light of the moon god. When she overheard a Yama plotting against Lord Norimoto, she knew in her heart that she was right to have refused him. That night by the well, she told Kino Saga of Yami's plans. He vowed to seek an audience with Lord Norimoto. Unfortunately for the young lovers, Oyami's mother had followed Akiko to see why she was sneaking about the castle in the dark. She scurried back to the mansion and told her son what she had heard. Burning with jealousy and furious that a mere maid would dare defy him, he ordered his mother to remove one of the dishes from Okiko's chest without her knowledge. Terrified for her own life, the old woman bowed herself out of the door. When she was out of his sight, she relaxed her guard and cackled to herself over how simple a task it would be. As female head of the household, to steal a dish from one of her maids was child's play. Having seen to the maid's demise, Oyama sent for his faithful follower, Chunotsubo, and instructed him to keep Kinogasa too busy to report to Lord Noritomo. And, if possible, he was to discreetly arrange for him to have a fatal accident. Once his plans were set in motion, he asked to see the dishes. To Kiko's horror, the teapot was missing. Devastated by her own carelessness, the young maid ran out of the castle and wept by the well. She knew the price she would have to pay for losing or, losing or breaking one of the mansion's priceless dishes was death. After three days and nights of letting Okiko suffer fear of death and loss of her lover's company, Oyama went to her and offered to forgive her if she would become his new lover. Knowing that her life would be forfeit if she refused him this time, she threw herself into the well and drowned. In the afterlife, she lived in the well and wandered restlessly throughout the mansion, clothed in her white burial kimono. When she learned of Oyama's deception, she became vengeful. Her apparition appeared in the early hours of the morning and hovered over his sleeping form. And she woke him up by slowly counting up to nine and shrieking in the most hideous voice, Where's my demon, Okiku? She continued to torment the samurai in this way for months and she became so wan and thin from lack of food and sleep that he could barely walk, let alone lift his sword. Racked with guilt over her hands in her son's misery, his mother devised a plan. She hid behind the screen in his bedroom and waited for Okiko's nightly visitation. When the ghost counted to nine, she jumped out and yelled, TEN! Okiko was so startled by the rude interruption, her mouth snapped shut and she could not open it to shriek. Frustrated, she shook her fist and glared at Uyama, but the old woman stood in front of him and glared back. Go back to your well and stay there, Okiku, she commanded. Just look at poor old Yama. He's not half the man he used to be, and now he's roaming around like one of the living dead. You've had your revenge. Leave us in peace. Okiku listened and nodded, but she was not quite satisfied. She needed one final symbolic act of revenge. She snatched the precious porcelain teapot and disappeared into the well. From that night forward, her sad voice could be heard counting to nine. The locals whisper that if you linger by the well under a full moon long enough to hear her shriek, you will age nine years and go mad.